So last night, my friends and I went to one of the new pubs in town because we heard it was quote-unquote chill. That's right, English scholars, chill is now a noun, a verb, an adjective, a slang verb, and a slang adjective. Anyway, it was quite literally the opposite of chill. The inhabitants of this pub were 100 or so walking, talking, stalking libidos and us. The music was actually loud enough to wake the dead and then prevent the recently awoken dead from hearing themselves think. Sorry, inescapably Caucasian DJ, Kesha's blah 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 is no more tolerable when blaring at 200 decibels. In fact, I would argue that it's even less tolerable. They had some TVs going, which I assume is some kind of wry little joke because there is no way in heck that anyone could hear them. Maybe they just figured that drunk people like something colorful to look at. Not an entirely unjustified assumption. So anyway, this place is set up with this big square bar in the middle, and there's tables and standing rooms on three out of the four sides, and on the other side, in the back, there's this little thoroughfare. So I found myself in a situation where taking aforementioned thoroughfare would be a quicker trick than having to go all the way around the front of the bar. It doesn't look too off-limits. As a matter of fact, it doesn't look off-limits at all, so I just head on through. And I'm about three-fourths of the way to the other side when this hair-gelled, official-looking, smelly jockstrap of a male grabs me by my sleeve and ushers me back through the three-fourths of the thoroughfare that I had already traversed. I'm just wondering, is that like that guy's job? Is he the official sleeve-tugging thoroughfare guardian? What I think is that he had all this pent-up aggression and instead of killing small animals, he thought he'd channel it through a job whose baseline requirement is that you must be a tool. I'm sure glad you stopped me and pushed me back through, crotch puncherella. Because I'm sure if you'd have let me break that fastidious and foolish rule that everyone in the pub would be appalled by your lack of professionalism and they'd get up and leave, never to get inebriated in your establishment again. Long story short, I didn't like that place and I probably won't return. Now, where's that intro? Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's April 3, the 93rd day of 2011, which means that 38 years ago today, the first portable cell phone call was made in New York City. So the picture I have in my head is a phone about the same size as the laptop I'm talking at right now. It's amazing how far cell phone technology has come, am I right? I mean, it seems like people today can barely get by without 4G service, without more apps to shake a stick at, without multi-megapixel camcorders. New from Apple, the iPhone 8 complete with built-in shaving kit, car jack, and tanning bed. Buy it now, you brainwashed morons. Buy it right now. Heck, when I got my NV3, I was just pumped I got a full keyboard. I guess I'm torn, really. I mean, part of me finds all this extraneous crap to be far too typical for this day and age, and another part of me gets some sick, shallow satisfaction from having all these bells and whistles. New from Apple, the iPhone 9, complete with actual bells and actual whistles, so that when you take it out, it makes a lot of noise, and everyone knows you have an iPhone 9. Steve Jobs is your lord and master. Bow before him. I feel like that's kind of part of it, too. Half the reason for having these decked-out phones is to feed your exhibitionist nature. I'm not saying that owning one of these newfangled phones is bad. I'm just questioning motives, and questioning the difference between having something you need and having something you want. Until tomorrow, I'm Griff, and I'm still talking.